Welcome to Shining Light Baptist Church. I'm so glad that you're here with us today. You received a bulletin. Inside that bulletin, you'll see on the left side the order of selection of service. On the right, you'll see the references that we're going to use in the sermon today. And on the back, there's a spot for you to take notes. If I say something that intrigues you, uh, we make this as visitor friendly as possible. Take it home, use it as a Bible study on the subject that we've talked about today. And I encourage you to bring it back. Tell us what God has told you on the subject as well. It's always a great time in God's Word. Today we're going to talk about confidence. So the last few weeks, if you haven't been here, if you haven't kept up with us on the YouTube or our CD ministry, we've been talking about things that affect our walk, that stop us from serving God. And we've talked about fear, and we've talked about busyness. Well, today I want to talk about the motivation to serve, and that's confidence. You see, a little while back I ended up having to have open heart surgery and a pacemaker, and the pacemaker is supposed to help keep the heart regulated. Well, at that moment in time, I don't have a lot of confidence in that pacemaker. And the reason I don't is because I just haven't had a lot of time with it. I'm still wrapping my head around that. But that's what builds confidence, time. The more time you have with someone or something, the more confidence that you have in it. Amen. You know, all the time that we spend in our cars, we're confident when we go out that morning to go to work. We go out and start that car. We don't run out there to see, make sure it starts, do we? We just go out there because it's done it so many times in the past. It's came through. We have confidence it's going to start. Apparently, unless you're the biggest. <laughs> we're having trouble nowadays with their car. But that comes with the time. And a lot of people, a lot of their walks, are not growing. And it's not because you're doing something wrong. It's just because you're not doing something. And that's spending time with God. The more time that you spend with God, the more time you spend in His Word, the more time you spend in prayer, the more time you actually become part of the ministry, the more confidence that you're going to have that God is going to supply all your needs according to His riches and glory. You can read that all day, but you're not going to really believe it until you have confidence in it. And the only way that you get confidence is if you're willing to spend the time necessary to do so. So we're going to talk about advancing our walk with the motivation of confidence in God's Word. We know that Paul had that kind of confidence. When Paul was coming to the end of his life, he showed just how much confidence he had. And now we're going to take a look. There's three looks that Paul did and three points of the sermon that I want to bring out to us. The first one is that he looked around. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 6 through 8, read this way. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering. And the time for my departure is close. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. There is reserved for me in the future the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day. And not only to me, but to all those who have loved his appearing. When Paul was writing this, he knew that it was time was coming to an end. It's interesting to note that Paul did not use the word death anywhere in the New Testament. He never thought as death as an ending. Part of our problem as we walk this life is that we look at death as an ending. But really, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, and if you really, if you're not, it's a doorway to eternity. One which you will cash in your rewards and live with the Lord forever, or you will suffer the lake of fire forever. Paul didn't look at it as a final spot. He looked at it as a door. Sometimes the word departure, as he uses here in Greek, means to take down your tent and move. And that's really what we do. We're not really victims. God is in control of our lives. I've always said that. But we take down our tent and we move. We move to our eternity. 
As you see here in these verses that I just read, Paul uses the terminology drink offering, which in the Old Testament was a sacrifice to God. Like in Genesis 35, 14 or Exodus 19, 40 or 41. Those you'll find in your bullet. And that's the way Paul thought of himself. Paul thought of himself as a sacrifice for God to you be used. And he showed it throughout his, his journeys. Being stoned almost to death, shipwrecked twice, beaten, and then finally beheaded. He never stopped. You would think in human logic that would discourage folks from doing those things or witnessing for God. But not Paul. No, he just kept going. He kept serving God. Why? Because he had confidence in God's word. He had confidence in who God was for the time that he spent with him. Paul was saying that he was laying down his life for the sake of the gospel. Question. Do we have that perspective of use me or use me up in our walk? Do we have the confidence, no matter what trial or tribulation comes in our life, no matter what opposition or force that tries to stop us or dampens our enthusiasm, do we have that, that perspective of, of I am a drink offering to be poured out as God sees fit or wishes to? Use me or use me up. It doesn't matter what's going to happen to me on this earth because I have a mission. And I'm going to fulfill that mission because I'm relying on the confidence of God's word to supply the needs I, ne I have to have that are necessary to finish my work. You see, a lot of Christians, they try. They don't read their scripture. They don't come to Sunday school. They don't pray really well or a lot. They don't join in ministries. They show up on Sunday. They do what they think is the bare minimum. And then they try to step out on ministry, but yet there's no confidence in God supplying your needs. There's no confidence that God's word is all that they need to complete the task that they're doing. There's no confidence. It's not there. Why? Because they haven't spent the time necessary to build that confidence. I'm sure in 110 years, I'll get confident in this picture. I'm sure the more time that I spend in God's Word, the more confident that I am that God will supply the needs. I'm sure my faith will grow as I step out on ministry and I continue to march forward. I'm here to tell you, and I want you to make sure that you understand this. When you step out to serve God, there are going to be trials and there's going to be tests in your life. There's going to be battle scars and wounds from where you, you serve God because people will do that to you. But that is the moment in time when you say it's under the blood and I have confidence that God is going to supply my needs and I'm moving forward because that's why I'm here. But a lot of people just stop because they have the human logic that they offended. And because I've been wronged, I'm not doing that anymore. I'll ask people, how's your walk? People I just meet or I used to work with, and they'll say, well, the walk's okay. I said, where do you go to church? Well, I used to go to church. Let me tell you what happened to me. And immediately they've got a story where they've been wrong. Justified or not. And because someone wronged them, they have stopped their movement forward in serving God because they feel justified in doing it. They buy into the excuse that Satan's given him. You're right, so you don't have to do this. It's a false righteousness. But they stop. And I'll always ask them, do you go out to eat? And they'll say, well, yeah, we go out to restaurants. Have you ever had a bad meal or bad service? Yeah, I've had bad service, bad meal. Did you go to another restaurant after that? Well, yeah. Guess that blows your theory out of the water. Amen, amen. You've got to have confidence that God is directing your life. Amen. You've got to have confidence that God is in control of your life. You've got to have confidence that He's going to supply your needs according to His riches and glory. You've got to have confidence that God has a mission for you.
for you here to complete. And then you're going to have to complete it. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 5. It's not there. This is an extra one. I don't charge for the extra ones. But write it down. 2 Timothy 4 5. But as for you, be serious about everything. Endure hardships. Do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. So he's telling Timothy. But as for you, understand. <coughs> keep your eye on the goal and fulfill the ministry that you're called to do. My question is, is are we doing that? Are we fulfilling what God has called us to do? Because you see, each and every one of you are special. You're wonderful and beautiful in God's eyes. Sounds a little old, Steve, doesn't it? Sorry. <laughs> but you are. And he has a gift that he has given you that he expects you to use to present the gospel, to move kingdom business forward. Are we confident enough in God to be a sacrifice if he so desires? Wow, that's a big question. Are you confident enough in God to be used to the point of death? It's a matter of trust. Trust breeds confidence. Second look or second point is Paul looked back in Acts chapter 20 verse 24. He says, but I count my life of no value to myself so that I might finish my course and the ministry I received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of God's grace. Listen to this verse. It is the key of serving. Him. I count my life of no value to myself so that I may finish the course. The moment we count self more valuable than serving God is the moment you stop serving God. The moment you decide that you want to decide what you want to do is the moment you stop serving God. Paul says, I have to count my life worth of no value unless I am serving God or fulfilling the ministry that he has given me. Paul puts his trials into perspective by declaring that he counted his life of no value. It was important to finish the race. So he was willing to sacrifice his time, his abilities, his finances, and all his gifts to the completion of the ministry for Jesus Christ. Amen. We started this church. Pop was uh, one of the founding members. And he always told me that he hadn't done enough for God. And I said, even when you pass, Pop, this church still is preaching the gospel. It's still going forward in the ministry. And you touch that with your life. Each and every one of you had that testimony. As well as members. That after you're gone, the things that we continue to do to press toward the mark, to further kingdom business, will leave this church in good hands. So this stands for Jesus Christ to the point where the world won't stand for Jesus anymore. And then they will be here when they knock it down. The problem with folks today <clears throat> is that when they look at their busy schedule, they pencil, pencil God in last and erase him first when the time is too tight. I've got everything that I need to do. I need to do this. I want to do that. I pencil all this in. And okay, I'll give God two hours here on Sunday. And that should be enough. And I'll pencil that in. And of course, if I'm too tired, then I'm going to sleep. He'll be the first thing that you erase out of your schedule. Uh-oh, something happened. Well, I guess I just won't go to prayer service tonight. Uh-oh, something happened. Well, I guess I just won't go to the community dinner tonight. Uh-oh, something happened. The first thing that we remove is the thing that is... The most valuable. In today's society, people feel like failures unless they get a lot out of life. 
unless they can count their toys or watch their bank accounts grow, we feel like failures. Paul counted life nothing unless he was used, unless it was used for God's work. What he put into life was more important than what he could get out of it. When is serving God and putting in and promoting kingdom business worth more than the extra overtime that you volunteer for? When is serving God and promoting kingdom business worth more than the extra time that you put into your hobbies? Unfortunately, society grooms us to be a society of takers and not givers. One thing that I did notice today, well, this week, that I want to share with you, we said on the news that America is the biggest contributor, the biggest giver to the rest of the world, the, the wor world has. And I said that doesn't surprise me because America is the biggest country that is full of believers in Jesus Christ. You can see the connection there, can't you? Because we emulate and serve our master. But unfortunately, the world grooms us to be takers. What can I get out of life? I really want that new toy. I really want that bigger house. I really want that new, I, what is it, 18,000 phone now? Coming out? They seem to come out every year anymore. I really want that. I'll do what I have to do to get that. If we had a tenth of the excitement about serving Jesus Christ as we do about the new iPhone, imagine what God would do in this world. If we had a tenth of the excitement that people have for sports in the sports arena nowadays, imagine what we could do for Jesus. We're getting excited about things that are for me and you, instead of getting excited for things that are for Him. That's self. And that makes us takers. Unfortunately, one of the side effects of being a taker is that that time has to be invested somewhere other else than God. And if that time is invested somewhere else other than God, then your confidence in God providing of your needs is going to be very weak. And if that's the case, there's going to be very little motivation to promote kingdom business. And no wonder we erase God first from our schedule. The third point, or the third look, we did around, we did back, and now let's look at ahead. <laughs> Hebrews 9, 27 says, And just as it was appointed for people to die once, and after this judgment. It's a small verse, but it's a powerful one. What it says, it says judgment's coming. It says you're going to die, I'm going to die. All going to face that final judgment. It's coming. It's inevitable. You will walk through that door, and in that door, if you walk to the side where Jesus is, then you're going to lay your crowns at his feet, and you're going to wish that you did a whole lot more than you did. I don't care who you are. I often tease that I have a nightmare, and the nightmare is I'm standing behind Billy Graham when I get to judgment. And the Lord looks at Billy as he puts down his, thing, his, his crowns and he says, Billy, you could have done more for me. And you've got to follow that. Listen, God expects you to serve him. He puts you in charge of very little so that you can be in charge of a lot when you get there. We will meet our master for judgment on our works. And I guarantee you're going to wish you had the time back that you spent elsewhere. What we truly want to hear is found in Matthew 25, 21. His master said to him, well done, good and faithful slave, sir. You were faithful over a few things, and I will put you in charge of many things. Share your master's joy.
We are diligently to use our time, talents, and our treasures in order to serve God completely in whatever we do. Use me or use me up. An old mentor of mine always said that you punch Satan until your arms fall off. And then you kick him until your legs fall off. And then you bite him until your teeth fall out. And then you gum him to death. We don't stop serving God. We don't stop because we belong to Him. Our whole purpose is to press toward the mark, as Paul says. Our whole purpose is to promote kingdom business. Our whole purpose is to be ready to be used by God in the promotion of kingdom business and the advancement of the good news of the gospel. Are you doing it? <laughs> Do you have the confidence in that God is with you? Do you have the confidence that God is leading you? Do you have the confidence that God has got the power to provide for you? Do you have that confidence? If not, then you're going to have to spend time with your father so that you can trust him enough to have confidence in his word. And the moment you have confidence in his word, you will build your faith and you will move forward. But see, it's up to you to start. God should be first in your daily schedule. When you get up in the morning, even if you have to get up a little earlier, you should have a quiet time. There should be time with God first thing in the morning. Or your mind is fresh. Fifteen more minutes. Don't hit the snooze three times and you found your time. God should be first in your daily schedule in the afternoon. You should be first in your daily schedule in the evening and you should be the last thing that you think about when you go to sleep. God should be the last thing to be removed from your schedule. He should be an ink actually sharpened. And when you run into that crunch of time, there should be enough confidence to know that God shall supply your needs that He should never be removed from your schedule. Something else should be sacrificed. I told Pastor, you haven't seen my schedule. Nope, but I don't have to either. If God's important enough, you'll make time for it. Amen. If he's important enough in your life, you'll make time for it. I don't need to see your schedule. You just need to cancel something. Maybe we don't take our kids to five different activities. I don't know. I don't know what your schedule is. But I do know this. You're going to face your master. And you're going to wish you had the time back. Bow your hands with me if you will. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you can change that. All you have to do is say this prayer. You don't have to say it out loud, but you do have to mean it. Lord, forgive me of my sins. I'm lost and I need you in my life. Replace my will with yours and I will follow you for eternity. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Every head still bowed and every eye still closed. If you said that prayer today through our video or our CD ministry, welcome to the family of God. We invite you to come here to Shining Light, 294 Mount Vernon Avenue, Marion, Ohio, 43302, and tell us about that decision that you made so that we can start you on your path as a disciple. If you have a home church or you have a church that you're more comfortable with, maybe it's a family's church, then we encourage you to go to that pastor and tell them about the decision that you just made so that they may start you on the path. If you're here today and you said that prayer, just raise your hand and look up at me. I'm going to ask you three questions. Christ. And maybe this message was meant for you. This altar is over for you as well. 
We give this altar call. We'll have prayer warriors standing by. If you don't feel like coming down or not able to come down, just raise your hand while prayer warriors come to you. We have counselors to answer your questions. Also, the altar will be open if you just want to spend time with God. We have a section for that as well. Whatever God's telling you to do, know this. Our mission here at Shining Light Baptist Church is to make your walk better when you leave these doors than what it was when you came in. And we're going to give you the tools necessary to do that. All right, you may look up. Very good.